All right, uh, welcome back to HM and Biggie Review Things. Today we are reviewing Strange New Worlds, a new Star Trek series uh, on Paramount Plus, and we're going to do episodes four, five, six, and seven. So four episodes we did one to three. Check out a review up top. Uh, but this is a great new show that Star Trek is putting out, and uh, let's talk about it. So, Elvin, what do you think? There's four episodes. I don't know if we want to run through all of them, but overall, what, how do you feel the show is progressing now? It's in its middle point. Uh, I, I am so pleased with this show. Okay. Uh, I This is, as a Star Trek fan, this continues to be, to prove to be, and now I think it's gotten to the point where it's a definitive statement. <laughs> this is the best first season of any Star Trek ever. Ooh. Okay. We've had seven episodes, and maybe one or two weren't really great. They were all at least quite good, but the rest were all really, really strong episodes. You know, the, the series cheats a little bit, and I think we talked about this in our 1 to 3, right. that it's using some established characters, and so it doesn't kind of have to spend too much time establishing some of that. But it's it's telling great stories, good character beats. Some of them are asking good questions. This is what, you know, we want Star Trek to be. This is good Star Trek. I'm really, really liking the show so far. You? Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I think definitely, again, it's cheating a little bit because it's got an established world and, you know, production and, and everything. So it sort of knows you know, how to get a first season off the ground. Um, but I agree. I think I like the return to form with episodic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, stylized, you know, what do you call that? Episodic. Yeah, episodic television. Television, television yeah, where yeah, story every yeah. episode's contained. There's a little bit of a A and B story and character development. So I, I do enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, and I actually, the, the overarching thread that we talked about in episodes one to three hasn't actually surfaced that much. You know, in terms of, because in, in 1 to 3, they do kind of, I think it came out almost every episode, at least a little bit, about Pike knowing his death and knowing his fate uh, coming up. And I, I don't think they really touched on that that much in this kind of middle middle four here, which is fine. Uh, but I, I was I was predicting each standalone episode, and then they would have kind of that, that one major overarching plot that they would kind of touch on. But they're introducing, I mean, uh, they've introduced other kind of uh, smaller arcs. That are kind of being touched on and, and, and paid off, like the the doctor, Doctor Mbenga's right, daughter, yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. And so, um, yeah, I, episodic television and episodic storytelling. Clearly, these are the same producers that have done some of the other Star Treks recently that we don't like. <laughs> so maybe they're just much better at telling self-contained stories. Um, I don't know the reason. Maybe it's they've hired a bunch of new writers as well and, yeah. and directors. It looks like these are written by. People that, uh, that that haven't maybe haven't written the other shows, mm. but we could go through some of the episodes. Yeah. And let's see what okay, so episode four is. Is called Memento Mon. And no, it, Memento Mori. Mori. Oh, I got to get my eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know that? Okay. Memento Mori is a, it's a Latin phrase. Uh, something about. I don't remember what it is, but it's something. It's a it's a phrase. Oh, you show off. Okay, um, this is when. Um, we see that there's a Gorn trap. Oh, yes. Yeah. The Gorn episode where no Gorn is actually shown. Which I liked. I liked, I the, liked that I a lot. I liked that they're not, oh, here's an animal that's an evil monster. And, uh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the fact that it's a menacing threat yes. and they don't know how to deal with it. Yes. Um, yeah, they through the characters' reactions, through uh, La'an's history with the Gorn and kind of her character beats throughout the story, it establishes how credible this threat is and, and how dangerous these Gorn are, even though you never, ever see them. I thought this episode was done very, very well. Yeah, it's sort of a standard ship-to-ship um, -ship combat kind of story. Yeah. Right? And um, they kind of go through... It's kind of like that. Uh, I think this is in the in the Star Trek tropes or even maybe just sci-fi tropes. This is the uh, this is the submarine episode, <laughs> right? Where you have the Star Trek Wrath of yeah. Con type thing. Yeah, where yeah. It's, the sensors don't work. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. to rely on our gut feeling. Right. Right? And we have to use the environment against them. Yeah, right? yeah, So yeah. it's that type of story. But, hey, I like that. I, I like the fact that Pike believes in the Enterprise and he says she'll hold together. And, and I like how, like, the twists actually keep working. That every time you think Pike is one step ahead, you know, like, oh, and he's going to drop the bomb on them overhead. That's right. But yeah. actually the Gorn were waiting for that. And yeah. so I, I like that. Again, it, it really establishes both Pike as a creative and very competent captain of a, of a good crew, mm -hmm. but also that the Gorn are, oh, actually, they're they a pretty big threat here. They're pretty smart. They're not just... 
lizard suit guys, you know, <laughs> throwing very slow punches. <laughs> very slow punches. But, um, yeah, and I think the visuals look pretty yeah. good, really good. And um, they give a little bit of backstory to Ninian Singh's character. And mm-hmm. she, you know, it's a very creative stuff where they, she just hears a sound. Yeah. And yeah. she realizes we're in trouble, right? right. I like that, you know. Yeah. and Because uh, uh, unless you've watched the Gorn episode with Captain Kirk... You Which really don't know what have. a Gorn is. No, you don't. And, and you don't need to. You don't need to. Don't and need I'm pretty to. sure they'll update the costumes, of I course. I would assume so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's uh, number four. Number five is called Spock Amok. Mm. This is the brain swap episode. Yeah, the body the body swap. Body swap. Oh, or, sorry. Right, well, same thing. Same yeah, thing. same thing. Okay. Um, yeah, this uh, the title I think references uh, Time Amok or that's Spock, right, yeah, the original a, 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 a series. Original series. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is where Spock and T'Pring, yep. his fiance, who eventually will leave him for the character that we see in Seven, um, uh, they they do the body swap. I did not know that. Yeah, there was an episode where in the original series, I think Cybok is not introduced though. Until... No, no, not Cybok, not Cybok. No, no, not Cybok. Not it, it, so. In the original series, I think that the Amok Time or whatever it's called, uh, uh, Spock goes back to his planet because uh, he's, uh, and it turns out that T'Pring is like uh, challenging or like wants mm. to divorce him essentially or from from his commitments, and he and she chooses Kirk as his champion, and they have to fight each other. Oh. And it turns out it was a ruse because she wanted to marry this other guy, and the other guy is the the assistant jailer. At the, oh, at the facility that she's working at. I forget his name. See, anyway. I, didn't, I didn't know as much. I didn't watch so much TOS. Oh, but to bring, uh, on a side note, I always yeah. think of her name as Pringles, but okay. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, what did you think about uh, to Pringles <laughs> and this body swap? I mean, it's obviously when you do the tropey start, you know, mind swap thing, it's yeah. going to have some comedy. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, it's they, a lighter they episode. They do that. They, it's a lighter episode, and the two actors have to kind of show that they're, they're different people. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I like that. I think mm-hmm. it's, I like the fact that Star Trek has some, some little bit corny episodes yep. that um, that are a little bit more fun. Not everything has to be world ending and super serious. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it was pretty fun. One um, standout part for yep, me okay. for this plot uh, was that um, right after the body swap, they try to fix it, and then Pike comes in, and they have to try to pretend not to have swapped. Right. Yes. And then usually, you know, if if it's if the writing wasn't. Uh, like if it's not smart, it'll drag out that joke. Yes. Right. Uh, but actually, they they try it for like you know a couple of sentences, and then Spock logically realizes that no, we can't do this. We have to tell the cap. We have to tell the captain, and they do, and that that's kind of over. And then, you know, they don't try to milk that way belong way further than than it, it kind of it, it doesn't outstay its welcome. That joke of I have to pretend that I'm still me, but it's the other person pretending to be me. So well, I like that. This, I appreciate the that. B story is sort of a negotiation of a treaty. Right. Right. And, and Spock has to participate a little bit. Yes. Did you like that story? Because they kind of come to an interesting kind of ending where yeah, Pike um, realizes the aliens have a different way of thinking, right? Yes. And, and it's that, uh, like that super empathy kind of thing. And right. they, they ultimately want somebody to empathize with them. Instead of, and because I think that's ultimately what Pike does, right? Pike, yeah, he, yeah, he does that. Yeah, like, I of, see you know, your point of view completely, and this is your point of view, and why you shouldn't join us. There's complete risk, and I understand that. Yeah, and that kind of wins them over. I thought that's clever. I thought it was clever. I didn't think those aliens were that empathetic, though, the way they're portrayed. They're... No, but that's the thing. Depending on who they were talking to, oh, they I, were. That's okay. Uh, okay. But, but I, again, I, I can see how that that wasn't super clear. Even even Pike's solution, like I had to. I, I don't know if I rewatched it or I, I read some review that explained that that's why. That's why it worked, right? Because okay, when they were okay. talking with Vulcans, they were logical. When they were talking with the uh, the the angry people, I, go, uh, t- t- I forgot the name. Uh, Tho- no, not Tholians. Uh Oh boy, oh we're gonna lose a lot of Star Trek cred here. Uh, <laughs> oh jeez, I'm trying to read up quickly, but I can't see it. Anyway, the the angry people, the angry combative people, <laughs> they, they're angry and combative. And then when they were talking to Pike again, very diplomatic, very official. Uh, and then it was just Pike realizing that their way of negotiating is to be completely empathetic and become the other team, the other people, their their opposition essentially. And Pike did the same thing. It took me. A while. I, I didn't get that right away either. Yeah, this is the the kind of uh, Star Trek story where there's Tellerites. Tell, uh, Tellerites. Hey, sure, look it up later. <laughs> You know, I'm always thinking Andorians because no, kinda, no, but the Andorians are the blue ones. I know the, they're the blue yeah. ones, but they're kind of angry all to all to. But yes. I think it is Tellarites. They're kind of yeah, yeah. pig-like. They're kind of pig-like dwarf. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, the furry things. Um, 
I mean, it's that story where they're going to have this mind swap, and then there's like kind of a, kind of a negotiation type of storyline, and they've done that before in Star Trek too. So I mean, which we, is like the, the episode where Beverly Crusher falls into in love with that worm, and he, you know, Riker's got to go the in trill. And, yeah, it's yeah, it's the, the introduction okay. of the trill. Yeah, I mean, fine. I just rewatched that recently. Anyway, right, yeah. but you I mean Riker's yeah, yeah. got to go in and do negotiation as right. someone else. That right. type of story, right, 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 really right. beat for beat. But uh, yeah. what did you think about? The, I think the, the the thing we all talk about is Captain Pike's green outfit. No, oh, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I I'm still working. It's been years. I've been trying to work through uh, the, the original series and. Uh, it's it's difficult because I started with TNG and yeah, so it's, it's difficult hard. to go back. Hard. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really iconic and seeing. It's well, a, what is that? I thought it was like pajamas or something. No, I think just sometimes he switches. I don't know what it signifies. It's not an it's not a ambassadorial uniform. I don't it's think sort so. of like his casual uniform. Or yeah, something. it's not a, it's not like a dress uniform. Like it's we've not established a dress, uniform, dress uniforms and other things. But uh, I don't know what it is. But it's nice. It's a it's a really odd green. It really stands out. It really uh, does stand yeah, out. So. It's okay. These I like actors got to be really fit. Like Anson Mount, if you're watching, you know, got to give you credit for hitting the gym every and his, day. And his hair. Because to wear that looks, stuff yeah, really is kind of really, that look. really form-fitting. Yeah. I mean, so anyways, little side note there. But I did notice that was featured prominently in this episode. But overall, of the four, I would say, I mean, because of the nature of it right. being a comedic like episode, it, yeah. this is probably one that I would rank a little lower. Sure, I think still sure. think it's a very good episode, or it's a good episode. But that's the uh, thing with, the, with Star Trek and uh, Strange New Worlds and good Star Trek is that you can have some of these mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Episodes that are clearly not as strong, but mm-hmm. in the overall thing, it, it makes it's, sense to have a few. Yeah, of these it's episodes. required. Yeah, it's, it's required. actually good. You don't it's want every good. episode to be right. world ending right, and right, a big right. battle and everybody's angry, mm-hmm. right? All right. What's uh, what's uh, six? Six is lift us where suffering cannot reach, and this is uh, where they receive the distress call from a signal, and they go to a planet called Magellus. Magell- Magellus. Mag- I'm anyway, terrible with names. You are terrible with names, oh, even man. when you're reading him. Um, hey, yeah, this is this is where they encounter that high tech society where everything is perfect there's no disease right. and they really revere this child and the whole time you're just waiting for it you know <laughs> you know something is wrong <laughs> yes uh, and then there's this other colony that's kind of fighting them back but it's the same people and so they tease that out a lot um, which I think is okay um, like it's not really meant to be like a shocking twist I think it's, it's supposed to be a twist for the character uh, for Pike to realize, um, but you know, I think as an audience, you're supposed to get that sense fairly early on. Yeah, it's a it's a heavier episode toward the end. I mean, there's a little bit of nitpicking here where like certain things I'm not sure really made sense, but I like the fact that they didn't really explain why they had to have this child sacrifice. Yeah. They, they, I mean, I think it's they're hinting they're going to go back to this planet. Yes, right because. Well, you think well, so? yeah, because I don't think so. yeah, maybe not. But Pike has a lover there. No, 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 I don't think so. Okay, well, he he might go back himself. Okay, yeah. to to spend time with his lover. But I think um, I mean they purposely leave a lot of the science ambiguous. Like I they don't ask, know. oh, how, what what is happening to the child? Oh, we don't know. This has been here for thousands I, of years. I think they could go back because because this is a very medically advanced society, and and to the point where they outclass Enterprise in terms of that. And I don't know. I don't know. It, it was it was a good episode. Um, yeah, but they've done that before with um, uh, uh, the TNG episode. I believe it's episode. called No. Oh, there was that one, but that one's with cloning. There was the one uh, let, when the bow breaks. I think it's called with oh. the uh, with uh, with the Aldeans. Okay, you're a the, nerd. The, <laughs> the alien race that couldn't, they, they couldn't have children. They were all right. sterile and they were invisible. They were super, super high advanced. And then they kidnapped some of the, the Enterprise's Enterprise children. children right. um, anyway, so they're kind of similar thing there. Um, there's a, quite a few things that I like about this episode. I like that Pike didn't stop it. He couldn't well, he, stop it. He couldn't, it. but it was also weird that they let him... Here, come and watch. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay. But he saved his life. And All right, fine. They, they kind of tried to explain it, but it was kind of really odd that... Really? You're the first person ever to watch yeah, this. Yeah, like, I thought maybe, like, it's a, a group of people can come watch, and <laughs> or you can come too. Yeah, but no, no it, it's no. literally just... I'm going to sacrifice a child. There are guards. And, oh, you can come too. Um, I like that he doesn't solve the problem. Uh, I like that, you know, yeah, at the end he has to wrestle with... He also has to wrestle with kind of the questions that... I forget the character's name, uh, but but the woman asks him, like, that, like, oh, like, is your federation really that perfect? Like, you have suffering children too, but yes. our suffering one is on one person, and 
it's for the benefit of everyone. And, yeah, and, and to me, that is the best type of Star Trek, where you get the long shot of yeah, the captain you... <laughs> looking out the window as he contemplates whether he did the right thing, whether he should be doing more. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and whether the Federation is even in the right to kind of judge right. something. Yeah, like and this, so yeah. I, I really like that type of Star Trek. It's that this is like sort of the thinking man's episode, yeah. where you have to wrestle with. Ooh, they make a good point there. It's not like every they're bad guy versus good guy, mm-hmm, you know. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was a great episode. Um, but that was episode six. Okay, and then episode seven, seven is. Is the Serene Squall, yes. and that is the latest episode uh, just released, and it's it's sort of a good old pirating episode. Yeah, pirate they, episode, and kind of like the bad guy was amongst us the whole time, kind of right, thing. Yeah. And um, I, there's some parts of this uh, which I thought were were uh, pretty well done. Uh, I have some. I, I don't know if even these are nitpicks. Um, maybe they're a little bit bigger than nitpicks in terms of like. <laughs> Like, her whole plan was to get to Spock. That was her whole plan, was to get to Spock, right? And so she devised this whole thing to... I mean, so it, it's maybe just kind of like a super villain kind of level kind of thinking. Um, I didn't understand a, how she got on board the ship. She was invited as the doctor because she... That was, oh, she, she faked her identity. She faked her identity okay, because yeah. she marooned the actual real doctor somewhere. Right. And the Federation does not have visual, visual records. records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find that extremely hard to believe. Okay, and and then the, the she actually served. She said she served on a starbase or on a ship for a while as a counselor. They, oh, the different yeah. people. I mean, we have passports for a reason. Anyways, they get out, she gets on board, and yeah, she, there wasn't even like a face mask reveal. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. yeah anyways, I, I mean, it, it's a very standard kind of. Um, uh, did you like the fact that they somehow got on board the ship and they had a kind of a fight on board yeah. the ship? Yeah, That's fine. I thought it was right? okay. I thought, yeah, I, I thought all the beats were kind of okay. You know, them coming on the ship, the twist, uh, you know, uh, Pike having to start a mutiny and sort of take over that ship, but not really. I thought it was all, I, it all worked for me. It all worked for me pretty well, actually. Yeah, they even had some of the, the stuff where they're on the bridge and they have to fake something, fake yeah, romance, yeah, yeah. which Picard is done with what walks on a Troy yes. and that kind of stuff. Obviously, everybody knows it's fake, but... Yeah, I forgive that. But it's I like good that Star because Trek. this is, is, is it fake? Because obviously Nurse Chapel does have some feelings for Spock, and that's also from from the original series. I, I uh, think this Spock is way too romantic. Like, ever he's way since... Too emotional. Way, ever since the uh, JJ, JJ mm. Spock, he's in love with every single girl, and every single girl's in love with him. And, you know, Hora's in love with him. Then, you know, this to Pringles in love with him. Uh, Nurse Chapel apparently likes him. I don't know. I mean, really, he's a he's a very boring person. Like, he's not that interesting. Like, why would any girl like him? But so I, I really don't know. I mean, the original series, Spock was very, very just into his work, and he was in. He was just like a kind of an interest, like a boring guy. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm he not was sure. betrothed to T'Pring in the original series, and again, he went back and oh, it turns out she just. It was a whole ploy for her to How divorce him. How can anybody in. with emotions want to date a person without emotions? I don't know. Uh, well, because <laughs> Chapel says because he's honest. He's always honest about. I don't know. Uh, Honesty is great. Look, we should I, all be we, honest. We, we, but we shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be giving boring people. Okay, we shouldn't be giving dating advice <laughs> or, like or, or how Spock saying, appeals to like, women. Like uh, if he's a good-looking guy, fine, and if he's like um, really interesting. But they, they, like Spock is a Vulcan. He doesn't have. He's half a Vulcan, <laughs> but he suppresses his human side. So why is he? No, but again, it, it mentions here that he hasn't gone through colonar or whatever it is the the purging of emotions has he done that in uh, in the original series i, I guess but like he's, maybe yeah so maybe but, but then he should be a little bit more like human he's not he's he's, I, even, he's even more robotic than than leonard nimoy spock. i actually like uh the current spock i i think it would be it would have been it would have been uh, a, a fruitless uh, like a futile attempt for him to kind of copy Leonard Nimoy is because he sure. was so iconic in that role. Uh, you kind of have to do it slightly differently, and I yeah. actually think Ethan Ethan Peck, right? I think I think, I think he's, he's a fine doing, actor. Yeah, I, I think just think doing, I don't understand why they keep on making him the romantic interest of the of the crew. I mean, that's true. Uh, Pike is a great looking man. <laughs> Pike's a good looking guy, and I guess he has some flings too. But um, I don't know. Make it. Why is Spock this like? He's become this like sex symbol on the crew. I, I just don't get it. All right. So uh, what are you what are you looking forward to in the next three episodes before we get to the finale? It's a ten uh, episode se- season. Uh, what do you what, what do you think is going to happen? More of the same? You think the quality I, I, can keep up here? I think the quality is going to keep up. I, I think it will be more of the same because unless they do this thing where it's oh let's introduce a mega villain at the last episode. Well, 
I mean, there was the reveal at the end of seven of Cyborg. But Cyborg, if you wa- have watched, he's not the- a villain. He's yeah. not a strict Well, villain. maybe in this series he's a villain. Right. He is a villain in Star Trek V. Yeah, because this is before Star Trek V. Absolutely before. Yeah. He, yeah. Star Trek V, he's an old man. Right. They're both old. Yeah. And it's revealed that Spock has a half-brother, and you know he's the main villain. Star Trek V is a terrible movie, but he <laughs> um, Cyborg's looking for God. Yes. And the famous line is, what, what does God need with a starship? <laughs> Literally in the movie. And it's about them finding God, and they fire torpedoes on God. And... <laughs> It's really the ridiculous. The directorial debut of William of Shatner, William Shatner. Captain Kirk. Yes. So, anyways, uh, long story short, there. I mean, Leonard Nimoy directed two, uh, three, and four, and then Kirk uh, Shatner was like, "No, I get to direct. I, want one, one, too, I yeah. want one too. If you want me in this movie, so I gave him five, and it was the big stinker of all stinkers, right? Anyway, so they tried to find God, they didn't blow up God at the end. So, but I, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like Cyborg will be because I think. He's looking for God. He's looking for Shangri La in Star Trek. So maybe no, it's more I know. The same. Now you think that journey begins now? <laughs> but I think he's a fanatic. Like he's crazy. Yeah, because they, they hint at that. that he, he's, he's crazy. He's, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. So rejected pro- exactly. Uh, Vulcan he way. Re- rejects the Vulcan way, embraces yeah. emotion, and then somehow wants to find God. <laughs> okay. So, that, so I think it might go in that direction. But I don't know if he should be the baddie in in this series. He's not unless they really change the whole character. I don't mm. think, anyways. I could be wrong. So, I mean, there could be some potential pitfalls there, but I also expect uh, the, the season to end off strong. Um, that's what I was saying about percentages. I mean, we're, we're 70% of the way through, and I think, you know, the, it'll, it'll all end strong. Been pretty good. So, it's strong. Yeah, especially compared to some of the other live action treks that we've seen recently. This has been such a breath of fresh air. I look forward to these episodes releasing every week and, and catching up on them. So, yep, I'm, absolutely. Yeah, I'm hoping for the, for the next three. I'm looking forward to them. Good. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Well, let us know uh, if you've watched Star Trek Strange Worlds. If you are a fan of Star Trek and you've kind of tested with a little bit of this new Trek from, you know, 09 uh, Abrams Trek uh, to Discovery to Picard, and it really wasn't your cup of tea, give this one a try. It's, it's, uh, it's really... I mean, I, I know there are people who enjoy that other new Trek. We, we didn't. But if, if you did if that tough stuff wasn't your cup of tea and you kind of uh, you grew up on TNG DS9 and you kind of long for some of that kind of more that level of storytelling and character and pacing this really really check it out it's it's I, definitely I would worth say it. even if you if you've never watched Star Trek yes. this is a very accessible show absolutely you can get what's happening you can get where the characters motivations are yep. and you can get uh, why you know the things that are happening on the ship and it's it's a it's a good Star Trek uh, to start with actually that's a really good point I. I I think I was reading something that was saying that this uh, Strange New Worlds has a lot less techno babble than the TNGs and where they're making up, oh, you know, chronotons and, and trilithiums and, and, you know, these waves and these different Interestingly things. Interestingly enough that you say that, when you mention those words, I understand what those words are, though. What those words are in the context of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they use it so much. Yeah, they do. Anyway, uh, do check it out. Let us know if you've seen it. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about what we think as well in the comments. I uh, would love to have a chat with you. Until next episode, uh, keep watching things. Keep watching Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. <laughs>